Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in Edupedia World. Today, we are continuing life, how life was for ancient Romans. In the last lesson, we got a glimpse of how a town was organized. Today, we're going to go deeper into the types of buildings and services we've discovered that ancient Romans had in their towns. So, let's go and see what was used, what they sold, what they bought, where you could go to stay the night or eat out in a Roman, ancient Roman town. Starting with commerce, we have to mention that it was organized basically by guilds and there was a great structure of complex services. It was not just one merchant. This was organized by the different places, different produce, different origins, all organized by these guilds. For example, there is a square from the corporations in the port of Ostia, for example, where the offices were dedicated to the different products. And you could find things like wood, cereal, even wild animals. In front of each office, there was a picture, like this one, that let you know sometimes the geographic origin of the people working there or the business that was conducted or even the town that they represented they had a picture in front of every office that gave you the information you needed to know if you were going to the right place i think we should bring this back it would be very useful sometimes in big buildings. Then we have the Macellum. These were buildings, uh, well, they, they were markets. They were buildings specialized for the market. They were before temporary markets outside the town in open areas and still for specialized products or uh, for example for animals like cattle domestic animals you will normally have open aired markets outside the town here uh, you would have more for your fresh produce this type of building comes quite later at the start it was only found in, around the forum and then the main square the forum if you remember and then you start finding these municipal markets that were actually controlled by the ediles the town responsibles and on one side of the public market, this is quite interesting, there was the weights and measurements that were used in that town and were scaled and ready just in case someone wanted to rip off someone else. You could go to the municipal market, to the town market, and find the official weights and scales to prove if someone was trying to cheat you. They were open for public use. So imagine the fights that uh, they might have sprung. This buildings had a normally square, but you can find rectangular base. The area was limited and in the middle you would normally have a fountain or a water basin to be able to wash the produce. It's all organized like in a cluster. 
that you would find in any re nowadays religious buildings. As I said, you would basically find fresh produce here. You didn't really have more complex uh, items. This was more an everyday market. Also, you would have all the shops that you can see on this side that would either give the main door would uh, be outside, looking outside, or you could have some that would be looking inside. Sometimes it's half-half, sometimes it's all of them, sometimes it just depends on the building. It's not standard. Also, in some place of the market that was considered a holy area, you would probably find a statue of Mercury, because he was uh, kind of the patron of commerce and uh, merchants. Or, in some cases, a statue of the emperor. This, this is not Pompeii. I know we've been working a lot on Pompeii, but we have to mention this market. This is one of the most impressive markets that have been found. It's the market of Trojan, the uh, emperor. It's situated close to the forum, but it's two different structures. Sometimes it's confused. And basically, it's this enormous market where you had multiple spaces for the associations and guilds. There was, it was like a big building of offices, shops and lodges to sometimes contract people uh, you would go there to find a job, you would uh, go there to find someone specialised in what you needed. This is proof of the great complexity of ancient Rome. It's not just a couple of Roman soldiers moving around. This was a real complex society. It was designed by a special architect, Apollodo of Damascus. This was not an ordinary building. And later, uh, just for you to see how well built it was and designed, when it started being abandoned and not used as a market, people started using it as rooms to live in. And now let's start going to the next places. Where would you keep all those produce, uh, all those products? Well, we had the Horea or Granarium. These are the warehouses where you used to keep um, cereal, stocks of everything you could, uh, you could keep in there. So normally things that can be kept and aren't going to wither really quickly like meat that would go bad. They didn't have a much defined structure. The one in the picture is really good, but they were normally adapted to the building they were in. So what was most important wasn't always the structure that could be one floor, one story or two stories, but they had to be especially well communicated with main transport routes and commerce entrances. That was the most important thing for them. The structure varies a lot. What we also have, and you've maybe seen, is Quellarium. These were warehouses sellers for liquids, so we have the distinction. And usually there were patios where they buried these big vases called dolia. They're enormous, 
and they would have oil, uh, not usually milk, but water, and sometimes they would still keep grains in here. They would also have the, the typical and famous fish um, paste soup um, that's called garum. It's in modern days, people um, don't really like it, but in Roman times, it was really uh, delicious and everyone wanted and had some uh, as often as possible. So liquids would be stored in here. We've talked about this briefly with the market, but we have the tabernae. These were the actual shops. This is the name for shop. And we have these pictures of Pompeii now. Most of the pictures we're going to see are from Pompeii, where the whole town has been so well conserved. We have houses and shops standing and with everything inside. The shops in Roman times were quite small spaces. You had normally 20 or 35 square meters of mostly square rectangular shape uh, area. The entrance always facing the street and they would normally be in the ground floor of an insulae or domus, a house. So you'd have the house and on the sides of the house facing the street you would have shops just like today. The ground floor was normally quite high in these cases so sometimes they've been found some tavernae with two stories and that extra space would be kept as storage, that's a good use, or maybe they would, in cases that the shopkeeper would need it, he would use it to sleep himself and his family, or sometimes even to rent it. So here, every single space is used, as you'll continue to see. Where would you go and eat out? We've finished shopping. Now let's go and eat out in a Roman town. They had bars and restaurants and these buildings are really easy to identify because the structure is quite particular. They had a built-in counter that was normally covered by marble plaques that made it easier to clean. On the top, it would have some openings where they would have embedded some amphora and some awesome vases. Uh, and there they stored the food and the drinks that they sold. So you had this counter, all the vases inside, and they took the food out of there. Really pla practical and well prepared. They would also have, as you can see in the picture, tables and chairs. It would be for people to eat, but also to play dice. It would be very, very common. This is a picture found in one of the restaurants, actually, showing one of the most usual hobbies and entertainment that Romans had play dice. Sometimes things don't really change, do they? That's the same kind of thing we have in our local bars. Now we're going to go into some different names for restaurants and bars. They are basically just changing a bit of the structure and the use, but they had quite a, di a diversity of different buildings 
aimed at giving food and shelter to people. The Thermopolium or Thermopolium were bar restaurants where you would eat on site or you could get actually hot or cold food to take away. Great! Just like some people go to get their local curry. Here you would go and get your garum and your rice and your wheat and your bread and you have food to take away. The counter faced the exterior where there was space with tables and the chairs for the clients. And behind, as you can see, there was shelves where you would keep cups and you would have a, a fireplace to heat up the food. So it's well, well built. Then we have the Kaupona. You see, it's really similar. The difference is that the Kaupona was more like a serviced hostel and it was mainly aimed at travellers as it was very, very cheap. It was quite, it was smaller, let's say, but you also had this little bit of cafe space and some tables to play or to just sit down, but it wasn't as extensive. And sometimes it was quite usual, as many hostels were in those days, that it, would, it also served as a brothel. So you would have the possibility to stay the night, to have some food and to have some company at night. Another common little restaurant were the Popinae. These are really, really close to what we've seen. You see that the pictures depict really um, similar constructions. The difference here with the Popinae is that you would eat and drink standing up. This was just a quick place to grab something on your way to work, home, to the forum, wherever you were going. Just grab something quick. It wasn't exactly a takeaway. It was just some snacks. So we've seen where we would go and have some food out if we were going around an ancient Roman town. But where would we stay the night? Well, we have Hospitia. These were hotels found only in big cities. These were prepared to host large numbers of people. Originally, yes, it was fairly common that you would stay with families and people would, would host you, but this custom evolved and it modified to renting rooms to foreigners and then it changed into a full commercial activity where you readapted private houses and you changed them to, make, to have more space, more rooms and some I have to say, they got into quite high class. They had restaurants inside to uh, give food to the host, to people they were hosting. They had gardens around, real good, I won't say maybe five stars for the, for the time, hotels. In Pompeii, we have an example. We have uh, the house Salustri. Here, 
uh, it was originally an old house in that covered one block and they've been found what we found here is one cow pona it had various bedrooms we know that later they even added a uh, thermoporium another restaurant that served food for the clients and just to make the services better they even built in a bread shop and three mills the whole building was dedicated to the business of servicing people that were passing through or were staying for a couple of days but what happens if we are moving around in the countryside well if you're on the roads you would have two types of lodgements you would have mansiones these were hotels in the countryside that were normally um, 25 kilometers from each other this is because 25 kilometers is about the average distance that a person would be walking in Roman times. Do we do this every day? No. <laughs> also, if you were moving around with your cart, you would more likely stay in a stable. Here comes the word stable these were roadside hotels and what they did they had rooms for the travelers and stables for the horses it was a big large inside patio where they would keep all the horses the carts and you would have everything you would need to maybe repair your cart or take care of your horse and now that we know all this, we just have to talk about one more place, the bakeries. We've mentioned them before and I didn't want to finish the lesson without going into it. In this picture you see the oven uh, here, this is the oven, and these are the mills. These are the various mills where they would crush the, the grains and make the flour. Bakeries, as we've said, were really important. Bread was the base of the diet. And as we've mentioned, many people would try or they would do their own bread in their houses, but they didn't really have the good ovens to cook it. So you'd have to always go to the bakery or you could also buy the flour there. In big cities like Pompeii, this is from Pompeii obviously, they had various industrial mills, industrial mills and these mills worked with animal force or slave force. You can see here, you would have the oven, the people preparing the bread here the mills that can be used with animal force or human force to make the flour and here you would normally have the shop to sell outside everything in the same building to make the most of it so now we've had quite an insight of what we could find and where we would go to buy things in an ancient Roman town. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and see you in the next one.